Hi everybody, my name is Karen Boniker and I'd like to introduce you to a new brush pack for Painter Essentials called Rain. What I'd like to do now is take you through the 10 beautiful brushes and show you how you can use them in your particular workflow. One of the ways that I enjoy working with these brushes is to not only start from scratch, but to use them as I incorporate them into paintings that I've already done where I might need snow or I might need rain. So in this case, um, I've opened up this seascape painting and what I'd like to do is show you some of these brushes and how you can use them in this particular painting. I've gone ahead and added a new layer here and I'm gonna start with the very first brush called Deluge. Every single brush here should meet your needs in terms of the type of rain that you're trying to create. But there are some caveats to remember. One of them is work with layers, start to explore composite methods, and don't forget your size and opacity because those are all important when you're trying to create a certain effect. So in this case, in, I'm going to reset this brush to default and show you coming from the top how this brush works. So I'm going from left to right and just kind of scratching back and forth, up and down, and you can see that this creates a very, very, very heavy look of rain falling down. Probably the reason we call it deluge is because it's such a heavy deluge uh, of rain and very, very heavy type of rain. Now we can control that effect by working with the opacity slider and bringing it down a little bit to soften the effect. So remember to do that when you're painting. The other option is to work with the opacity slider for the brush control. So this would mean if I brought the opacity down on that brush, I don't necessarily have to do anything on the layer, but it does make a difference on how saturated that brush stroke is as I lay it down. So you can get very creative uh, with these brushes in this way. The other option that I'll mention is working with composite methods. Methods like overlay, methods like soft cover and screen are all nice effects to use because they can really change and enhance the painting. Along with the composite method, you will want to apply the opacity slider on the layers to either um, enhance the look of the brush stroke or to subdue it. The next brush we're looking at is called Downpour. I'm again going to start on a new layer and work from the top here. And let me change that back to default so you can see that uh, the way this brush comes in. And you can see that it kind of comes in at a, a slanted uh, way, a slanted motion. And this might be just what you're looking for for creating rain in your paintings. Remember also that you can work with the size option on the property bar of the brush. So if I wanted to show the effect of that particular brush in the distance, I could go ahead and lay in some brush strokes here and notice that they're coming in much, much smaller. And again, I can control that effect or that look by working with the opacity slider on the layers panel. The next brush is called Drenching. And this brush, I really like using this brush. It's really a pretty brush to use. It has a lovely kind of flow to it. I tend to use it from top to bottom, but the other way you could approach it is just starting at the left-hand side and moving directly over. And you can actually take it down and do something like that. And then of course, play with composite methods and maybe screen and then work with your opacity slider to, to change the uh, effect of that brush. The next brush we're going to take a look at is called Pouring. And this one, in its default settings, and I'm just going to reset this brush again, this is one that I like using uh, for distant clouds, maybe rain showers on the horizon. And what I'll tend to do is, is use my Alt key to sample a nearby color that I want to 
use for the rain and then just go over those areas where I want the rain showers to appear. And you know, maybe I want uh, a lighter look up here. Maybe some rain coming up from the top. So I could go back and forth, up and down. So this is a, a lovely brush. Um, and you can get very, very um, detailed on where you put the brush. Again, remember that the size indicator of the brush tip will also make a difference on how you apply this and where you apply it. The next brush is called Sheets. And this brush, um, I, I, like to, I like to use this one uh, in its default size, but I also like to work with uh, opacity. And then there's a couple of ways that you can approach this uh, particular brush. You can work from the side and make, create an effect, more of an effect of you know blowing rain, or um, you can bring the brush size down, pick a color that you want to work with, and then just kind of create these big sheets of rain coming down from the clouds above. And of course, you can also use the opacity slider to, to change that look. I also like it in certain areas of my painting where I just want to create maybe a little extra texture, uh, sampling different colors here. Maybe I want to create a little bit of a shadow coming off the beach or some reflective qualities. So there's lots of ways that you can work with this brush. The next brush is called Showers, and this one, again, is a lovely brush. I'm going to reset it to default. Again, I would probably use my Alt key and use it very strategically where I want a certain effect. So if I'm looking for rain showers at the horizon, uh, I could do that. So you can be very, very specific on where you apply it and for what. The size can also be increased. So if you're looking for a broader cover, you could just use long sweeping strokes to go across your painting to show that uh, effect of slanted rain coming in. And that brush is Showers. The next brush is called Soaking. And this one is a very, very heavy brush. I'm going to actually take this brush to default uh, put it on a default layer with 100% opacity and I'm going to work this way with it. So I'm going to go from left to right with long, long strokes. And again, this would be an approach that you could use if you wanted to create the look of very, very hard rain falling. Two things, the opacity slider can be applied here so you can bring down the opacity to, to just soften the effect a little bit. Or you can play with some of the uh, different composite methods, such as screen. And I'm going to go ahead and bring the opacity down on that. So you can see that you get that real effect of you know really heavy falling rain coming down. So I, I like this one for that reason. I would also maybe use overlay blend mode, which would be another one that would be a nice effect uh, for showing this kind of effect. Um, I can break it up a little bit with a different color. Just going back over it with white. So another beautiful way of working, another beautiful brush to create rain. That's soaking. The next brush is called Squall. And I'll reset this brush. This one I really like using um, with, a, with layer opacity. Um, I'm going to, again, put this back to default. And then I'm going to start up in the left-hand corner and just let this brush kind of flow across. This one is a very, would be good for creating that very stormy look of, you know, a storm coming in and rain blowing everywhere. And then again, you can soften that effect with the uh, opacity slider, uh, the opacity on the property bar of the brush, or even working with different composite methods. You can get some beautiful effects with that brush. And that's Squall. 
The next brush is called Tempest, and this one is a real is more of a um, an effects type of brush. I use it just to create you know the illusion of maybe blowing rain, maybe just some showers coming through. Another approach that you can take with it using a smaller brush tip size is to use it, you know, maybe in your, um, I, I would use it where the waves are breaking to create maybe the look of, um, you know, little air bubbles and uh, pockets of, of uh, water. Even the look of maybe the waves crashing and and breaking over and the foam that's created from them would be another approach that you could use. That one is called Tempest. And the last brush is called Windy Rain. And this one I really like as well. Uh, the best approach for this one is if you're looking to just apply it in a certain area just left to right or right to left and then up and down. Uh, and you can create this really lovely rain effect. More of a kind of a broken up blowing wind type of effect with the rain. Again, it can be use your opacity slider to soften the effect a little bit. And remember that you can always change the size of the brush and apply it differently in certain areas where perhaps you just want um, you know, a very minimal effect coming through and then ap approaching it with your opacity slider. So how I would do that is I would find about the size that I wanted and run it along the bottom of the area I wanted to apply the effect to and then I could control it further with my opacity slider till I have just the right opacity there. So again, I hope you enjoy these brushes and they'll be some of your go-to brushes for creating the effects of rain in either new paintings or existing paintings. So have fun, take care.